Hey guys, thanks for joining us. My name is Justin Jones and I'm with Circle J Fab out of Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to build a 36 inch fire pit using all the components that you can get from us. We can supply anything from the tank head to the rolled rings and give you every piece you need to finish up your fire pit. So if you guys will stay tuned and watch along, we're going to go through the entire process step by step and uh, show you how we build them here in house. All right guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take what is a 5 8 rolled round foot ring and we're going to show you how we mark it and cut it down so we can go ahead and put it on top of the tank head. First off, if you've got a 36 inch fire pit, which is what we're building, your foot ring is going to be a foot larger than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and I'm showing to be at about 49 inches. So I'm pretty much right there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and mark this foot ring where we're going to cut it at. I'm going to take these arch pieces right here and I'm going to mark one for this one right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to squeeze it in just a little bit so I can get my mark to make sure it finishes out at 48. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to take that tape, put it back on there, come on over, 48 inches. That's exactly where I need to be. All right, guys, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and clamp it to my table so I can cut it without it moving on me. It's really important because you don't want it bouncing around and jumping back and forth. It'll ruin a saw blade. Now, we cut these with a portable bandsaw, but you can use anything you want. Some people use cutting torches. Some use plasma torch or a sawzall. Anything that makes the cut is going to work out just fine for you. All righty. So we got our clamps on there. Next, I'm going to put on my safety glasses. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it with the sawzall. All right, guys, we're gonna take our clamps off of them real quick. We're gonna set those aside. Now we're just gonna butt the ends together and we're gonna go ahead and weld it. Just a little tack. All right guys, now that we have a welded foot ring, we're gonna show you how to go ahead and set up a table so you can make weld of these a lot easier and a lot quicker. First thing, we're gonna go ahead and pull our ring off. And once again, since we're dealing with a 36 inch fire pit, that foot ring is 48 inches, so that's gonna be the largest outside diameter of our fire pit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna measure 48 inches out from this corner. I got a good square table, so I'm really not too worried about that. I go 48 from there. Then I'm going to go ahead and measure 48 inches from here. All right. Now that I have 48 and 48 marked there, I'm going to go ahead and measure and find out what my center point is going to be because that's going to be the actual center of the tank head. So my center is going to be about 68, so we're going to go ahead and put a mark down here at 34. All right, guys, 34 inches is going to be the center of my fire pit, and that's what I'm going to use to reference everything else off of. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is from the center point right here, we're going to go ahead and take our tape measure. We're just going to start making some marks at about 18 inches because I know that's about where my head's going to finish out at. So we're just going to make some marks that we can center our tank head with. They're just random. They can be anywhere as long as you get them all at 18. All right. Now that I know I've got a good center mark and I've got some marks for 18 inches, I'm going to go back to my mark again and I'm going to go ahead and just run it all the way down. I'm going to make a big line of intersections. Now, since I know that's about 68 inches, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to come down here from this corner. I'm going to intersect the center, which is right at 34 inches. And I'm going to just make my mark and run it all the way down to 68 inches so I know where the outside of everything is going to fall. Alrighty, I've got those marks. I've got some 18 inch marks. Looks like we're going to be pretty good to go ahead and put our tank head up there. All right, now all we're doing is we're just sliding our tank head and I'm going to try to center it on a couple of these 18 inch marks that I have back here. So. So I'm looking good here, I'm looking good here. We're gonna check the marks on the other side. All right, I will just bring it a little bit just to center it right on those marks. I've got a good center point. Now I'm just gonna trace around my tank head. All right, so my tank head's traced around. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clamp a soft tape on it to measure the outside diameter of it. All right, guys, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put a clamp on a tape measure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run the outside diameter of this tank head just to make sure it is what it is. All right, guys, my measurement is going to be 103 inches. So now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a calculator and I'm going to do 103 inches and I'm going to divide that by nine. It's going to give me 11 inches, roughly almost 11 and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to start making a mark on this tank head all the way around for this pacing that we just talked about. All right, guys, now that we've got our four lines in our circle, we're going to go ahead and add four more lines because we have eight of these braces that we've got to put in and we want them to be straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab my measuring stick or tape measure, whatever you want, and I'm going to go for this intersection point right here. We're just going to hit all four of these points right here and measure those. So I've got about 25 and 3 quarter inches. So we're going to put a mark right there in the middle there. And I'm going to do the same over here, and I'm going to work this out all the way around. Once again, 25 and 3 quarters. Twenty-five and three quarters. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put one more mark right here. All right. Now we're going to use those marks. And we should be able to line them up mark to mark. And it should go right through the center of my circle. So we've got that mark there. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put one more. It's okay. It's okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put one more mark right here. All right, we've got our eight marks representing where we're going to put all of our bars. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to set it on the table, and we're going to put all the bars on it and put the ring on it and let you see what it looks like all jigged up. All right, guys, now that we've got our tank head and it's got all the markings for the actual braces, and we've gone ahead and we've put our eight markings here for our braces, now we're just going to put the foot ring on and set our braces in place. So we're just going to start, what we're going to do is we're just going to center these braces right over those chalk marks. 
And if you notice while you're doing this, what you should start finding is that your foot ring is coming out to those outside marks we made earlier of 48 inches. So we know we're doing pretty good. All right, guys, now that we got all of our rings braced, you can see we're looking pretty square. We stayed on our chalk lines, which enabled us to be real square without having much effort. And if you walk around and you look at these, they're gonna be just a little loose and some might be just a little tight. Now what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna go ahead and clamp down this ring and we're gonna put a tack all the way around and weld it all up, all right? All right, guys, now that we've got a tack on the bottom of these rings to the head all the way around, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our three pieces of expanded metal and we're just gonna start setting them on the tank head where we're gonna weld them. Now, these guys are cut down, so they're gonna be a little bit of a, uh, of a tight fit, but all you wanna do is get them right in there, just like that, and then next what you're gonna do is you're just gonna tack them in. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and weld these in. Weld everything all the way around, flip it over, and we'll start with the legs after that. All right guys, now we've got a tank head. We've got our expanded metal welded to it all the way around. We've welded our foot rings all the way around, top and bottom. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the legs on it. What you're gonna do for putting the legs is you've got you're going to use four of the two and three eighths pipes and four of the two and three eighths pipe caps. All you're going to do is you're going to take those guys and you're going to weld them together. After you weld those together, what we're going to do is we're going to find placement for our four legs. First off, our legs are going to come in about two inches from the edge of our flange, okay? So it's real important to get them straight so that way you can actually weld them up pretty straight and square without any problems. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this expanded metal is, and we're going to go ahead and just put a two inch mark right there. We're going to put one there. We're going to put one here because our legs go in between these every other one. All right. All right, guys, now literally what we're gonna do is we're just gonna eyeball them. I'm gonna take my measurement in between these two rods and I'm just gonna figure out, okay, right here I've got about 16 inches, so I'm gonna come in at about eight inches and I'm gonna make a mark so I know that my lines are gonna intersect. It's gonna give me a good idea on how to go ahead and build and place my legs. It's gonna give me some intersect points. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and weld up our pipe caps and we're gonna show you how we place the legs on the tank head. All right, guys, as you can see, all we did is we went ahead and we just put two tacks on each leg where we had our measurements. That should be enough to let us flip it over and see if we can go ahead and square it out. Hey, Jamie, you wanna give me a hand flipping this over real quick? All right, now I've got a good flat surface, so I know it's sitting pretty flat. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of wobble. If it did, what I would do is I would take a hammer and I would find the area. Do that, no more wobble. We're just flexing those legs inside and out. Now guys, we're gonna go ahead and flip them back over and we're gonna put two more tacks on each side all the way around, then we're gonna weld it up solid. All right, next guys, what we're gonna do is we've got it completely welded. We got the legs welded all the way around. We're gonna go ahead and put on what's called the grill pipe. This pipe is what's gonna allow that grill top to swivel around and move up and down. Now we wanna attach it to two spots on the fire pit. We wanna get it on the tank head and we wanna get it on one of the legs. 
So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kinda hold it right up there and I'm gonna put a level on it. Now as you can see with my level, I'm actually sitting pretty good. So I got, I got a little lucky on guessing. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take that level off and I'm gonna go ahead and put a clamp on it and go ahead and just clamp it down a little bit so that way I can go ahead and start tacking it up there. Okay, I got a clamp. Let me put the level on it one more time. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna, gonna tweak it out and make sure it's still good. All right. Next, we're just gonna go ahead and weld it on up. All right, guys, after we've welded it up, Next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take what's called our accessory pipe. It's gonna mount on the back right here and it's gonna hold your bean pot holders or your fajita pan holders and all that. But before we do that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of a weld on the inside that's gonna keep the rods from just passing through when you put the bean pot holder in it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it right here and I'm gonna weld it up. All right, guys, that should be enough to keep it from passing through. Next, I'm gonna take it, and I'm just gonna start off by tacking it on my pipe. Now that tack's gonna hold it while I go ahead and put the level on it and make sure it is good to go and level. All right, so let's level. I'm gonna go ahead and weld it up. All right, guys, now we're gonna go ahead and build our wheel brackets. What you've got is you've got your steel casters. The size is gonna depend on the size of fire pit kit that you bought. You've got your four wheel plates. You've got your two axles, and then you've got your little spacers, and we'll get to those later. First off, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a small piece of tubing or anything, roughly cut about an inch and three quarters. What this is gonna do, it's gonna help us to go ahead and space these things apart while we build them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna even up with just where my marks are. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a clamp. And I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this down. I'm gonna make sure everything is sitting good. After I've got that clamp down, I've got the perfect spacing I need to put my wheel. So I'm gonna slide my wheel in there. I'm gonna take my little 7 16 inch axle and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. Now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and weld that axle to that plate all the way around. All right, guys, go ahead and repeat that to the other one and we'll get on the ground and show you how to weld them up. All right, guys, now that you have your wheel brackets built, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take them and you're gonna take a scrap piece of plate. This plate is just to set the wheel bracket up, off just a little bit. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna place that wheel bracket on there. Now, if you notice, you've got a gap right here on the outside, but it sits pretty true on the inside. That's okay, that's how they're supposed to sit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just put a tack on it to keep it in place. All right guys, now that we've put our wheel bracket, that we've tacked them on both sides, we're gonna come to this little wedge that we give you guys. What this is, is if you've got too much room in between your plate and your leg, you can use this to go ahead and fill the gap. Now these right here, I don't have too much, so I'm just gonna go ahead and weld them up solid and we'll go to building the top. All right, guys, now we're gonna go ahead and build the grill top. What you're gonna use is you're gonna use your inch and a half angle rolled grill top ring, and you're gonna go ahead and need to get your large piece of expanded metal. First thing we've gotta do is we've gotta check and see the diameter of our grill top. Now this is for a 36 inch pit, 
so it's going to have a 36 inch grill top. And before I go ahead and mark and cut, I'm just going back and forth a couple times to make sure. Now it looks like I'm sitting pretty good. So next, what I'm going to do, just like we did on the foot ring, I'm going to go ahead and take a marker and I'm going to go ahead and put a mark all the way down. So I know exactly where to cut. All right, we're going to go ahead and cut this, weld it together and we'll start putting the top in. All right guys, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we've got our grill top, we went ahead and we cut it and we welded the seam together. Now, if you still remember the marks we had on the table earlier from laying out the top ring, we're gonna use those same marks to help it just make it easy for us to center our grill supports. So remember, I've got my eight marks on the table. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here on the grill top and I'm just gonna put those same eight marks on my grill top so it makes it easier for me to go ahead and weld everything together. All right, now I've got my marks. Get my expanded metal. This stuff's gonna be real sharp. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set it in there. We're gonna center it because your expanded metal is gonna be cut just a little smaller than your circle. And now that we've got it centered, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing a series of tacks and we're gonna go ahead and weld it up all the way around. All right guys, now we've got a grill top that we've welded all the way around. What we're gonna do is remember these longer sections that we've got for grill bracing. We're gonna go in between our marks that we just made and we're gonna find a good little center point. And next we're just gonna go ahead and tack that in all the way to it. All right, now that I've got them tacked in and I know he's in the center, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna measure the center of this and I'm gonna put a mark because I know I'm gonna try to keep that as my center point when I start welding in the rest of these. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of them. We're just gonna put it up here and we're gonna go to a mark that we know we've got. We're gonna go cut it and weld it up. All right, guys, now that we've cut it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, we're gonna go back to our mark, we're gonna lay it right in there, and we're just gonna go ahead and tack it up like we did the others. All right, guys, we're just gonna work this all the way around until we get all eight braces put in there. We're gonna weld them to the angle, and we're gonna tack them to the grill top, all right? All right, guys, you've got your welded up grill top. Next, you should have one last section of two and three eighths pipe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tape measure and we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put a measurement every two and a half inches. What these holes are gonna be is to allow us to adjust the height of our grill top up and down. So I put a mark for four holes. I'm gonna go ahead and go drill these holes, weld this cap on, and we'll be good to go. Alright guys, we've got our holes drilled out. Let's go ahead and put it on the grill and get it welded. Alright guys, next we're going to take our little section of 3 8 round stock. We're going to go ahead and take it. We're going to put a mark at an inch and a half. What that mark is for is going to give us a good idea of where we need to bend it. All we're going to do is going to put it here. Now if you don't have one of these, um, using a vise works out great or even heating it up with a torch. Gonna bend it at 90 degrees. Now let's put it on the grill. All right guys, now we're gonna take our grill pipe, we're gonna put it in our receiver, and we're gonna put this pin in it right down here at the very top mark. All right, so I've got that. Next, we just use 
little pieces of inch and three quarter or inch and a half square tubing. That gives us a good level plane to set our grill top on. So now we're just gonna take our completely welded grill top. We're gonna set it right on there. And we're gonna go ahead and lift this up just a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and tack it on there. All right guys, now we come to our two arch braces. What these are gonna be used for is to help to brace the grill top to the actual pipe so it doesn't sag. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put them up here and we're gonna eyeball them and figure out where we need to cut them. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that guy there and I'm gonna go ahead and measure this other one and do the same. All right, guys, now that we've got these cut, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hold them up here. We're gonna make sure that we hold them level with our grill top, and we're just gonna go ahead and tack them down in a few places. All right, guys, now that we've got those tacked up, we're gonna go ahead and remove. These rods. And we're gonna go ahead and let the grill top set on that pin. Now, since it's only tacked, it's gonna go ahead and just warp and tweak a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna eyeball and see about how much we're missing. We've got a little more of a gap there than we do up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it 